Our last little segment for tonight, does anyone need to have a stand up and wiggle before we do our last segment? Yep. Yeah, look, why don't we stand up? Everyone stand up. Have a wiggle, 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 wiggle. Wiggle, wiggle. Arms up in the air. Bit of a wave. We're all going to shout out one thing. Are you listening? Are you ready? We're going to have our hands in the air. We're going to shout out, I'm alive, I'm alert, and I feel great. I'm alive, I'm alert, and I feel great. Thank you. Take a seat. (laughs) And I'd now like to invite Janice King back up, please. And Janice is going tonight to do give us a few simple tips on how to do a colour makeover. It's not really a makeover, how to use colour to improve your confidence. And we're going to do this as a bit of a double act because it's pretty hard for Janice to balance a microphone, balance an eyeshadow brush and (laughs) and do it all together. I'm hoping that light's going to give me enough light. We'll see how we go. would my model Abby like to come on up here? And give Abby a round of applause. <laughs> She's our model for this evening. Thank you, darling. Um, so do, I had to. No, oh, I, I, you should you you hear me down the back. Yes. Yeah. Um, I like the way uh, Jan spoke about. You know, you know, you look in the mirror, you, you get yourself ready, and and out the door. And I would have to say that. Colour is one of those things that can make your day when you're having a bad day, whether you're not feeling well or it's a, a, a grey winter's day and you just, I, I find that sometimes I just can't get up to speed. It's hard to even get out of bed when it looks cold. Um, but to actually even put like a, a bright coloured lipstick on can really make your day. Um, I love lippy for colour, for instant colour. Um, even if you haven't got anything else on, to put a nice bright lippy on can just make you feel fantastic. Um, so I do, um, I do love a little bit of lippy. Um, okay, now Abby's already cleansed, toned, and moisturised for me, and um, so I didn't have to kind of go through that process. And I am going to start with um, a face primer. Um, how many of you uh, pop your hands up if you wear makeup on a daily basis? Okay, we've got about 50% there, I reckon. Um, I've, I've found in my nearly 29 years in the beauty industry um, that a lot of people don't wear colour because one, they're not quite sure where to start, um, or it's all too hard, what colour should they choose? Um, I wore makeup once and it looked terrible. Um, you know, a lot, lots of different things. Um, and it is basic. Um, the great thing is we've got a, a special on afterwards. You've all got a, a pamper in your gift bag of either a skincare treatment, a personal skincare treatment, or a colour makeover. But we've also got a a, a special offer tonight that if you would like to get a couple of friends together and have a confidence session, whether it's skincare, whether it's colour, uh, you actually get to take home a $42 um, four-in-one mascara for doing that tonight. So if you kind of feel like you wouldn't mind a bit, I mean, obviously it's going to be hard for you girls down the back to exactly see what I'm doing, um, but you can all have a sticky beak at <laughs> Abby's face later on. Um, but, uh, you know, to actually have someone to have time to sit down with you and work out what foundation is correct for you, whether you're warm or cool, Jan was talking about, um, makes a big difference. A lot of people aren't quite sure about that one. And a cool person has a pink or blue undertone to their hair, skin and eyes, and a warm person has a golden undertone to their hair, skin and eyes. So if you put even like white, white is actually a cool colour. So if you're a warm person, you've got golden freckles and perhaps a bit of red in your hair or whatever, you look better in an off-white. So that's just, you know, that little tweak. 
you will look better because as Jan talked about, you know, you want to actually walk into a room and you're all coming together. But if you walk into the room and all anyone can see is that pink dress, it, uh, you know, and you've got, you know, it just doesn't work for you. That's all they'll see is the pink dress. They actually won't see all of you. So um, it, it is important. Colour is, colours, I, I always say skincare is something that, you know, this is the only face we're ever, and body we're ever going to have, and it's, you know, you make a choice whether you want it to make it look at its best. We're all going to age, you know, that's inevitable. Um, but colour is the fun part of beauty. That's where you can have a bit of fun. Um, now, I'm actually going to use one of our newest uh, foundations, and I, if you're into the beauty industry and you read mags and so forth, you'll see that there's... Uh, you know, like foundations now, it's like, you know, um, uh, foundation when you're not wearing foundation, it's like skincare. Well, ours is that, it is a serum. And it actually has a special brush that has a hollow in the middle and it transports the colour where it needs to go. Now you also, it's as light as a feather, so it doesn't even feel like you've got anything on your face. I have already picked a foundation for Abby, so I didn't have to worry about that. So I do know that I've got the correct colour. And the correct colour isn't trying it on the back of your hand. Yeah. Um, that is the wrong, that is not the same colour as your face. Um, <laughs> and you know, that's when you end up with that line around here. But also, wearing a foundation that either has a pink undertone or a golden undertone, if you're cool and you've got something that's very yellow on your face, that's not going to look good either. So, and when you actually put a foundation on, always go down through the centre first. That's where you need most of your makeup. You actually don't need much of this. Um, a little bit is actually coming out, not a lot of um, colour. So you always start up through the centre and then you actually work your way around the face. So you never need lots of makeup around the edge and your hairline as such. And the great thing is this brush just blends everything in beautifully and you can just kind of put a layer upon layer until you, you know, if during the day you want a light finish, you just put a little bit on. Oh gee, that's hard around that side with that light. Um, and then at night time, if you want a little bit more full colour, you can actually just stick another layer on. So why, sorry? Sorry, yeah. is there an SPF? Um, I think most of ours do, and yes, it has a 15. That one. They're all a little bit different. We've got about seven different foundations, just depending on your skin type and what you want your foundation to do. Um, some people like something really sheer, you know, like I must admit our uh, sheer tint makeup is popular because it's like a tinted moisturiser. So it's a moisturiser, a tint, and a sunscreen all rolled into one. And so if you're a one stop shop and you like ease of use, that's a great product. Um, some people have oily skin, so they'd go for the, the matte one, the one that doesn't have any oil in it. Um, and I'm just making sure that I'm kind of blending away here. Now, why do we wear a foundation? Well, isn't it funny? We did, a, we did research um, going back in time about what, uh, what people thought aged us more. Was it lines and wrinkles or was it uneven colouring? And what came out was uneven colouring. Because as we get older, we tend to have, you know, dark spots. Une you look at a baby or a small child and they're even as anything. They, they look so youthful. But we do tend to have a bit of uneven colouring. So what a foundation does is it gives you that evenness of colour and it's another layer to protect your skin from the environment. In Australia, we have... Um, the worst environment, well, most damaging in environment in the world. And if any of you have been to Europe, you'll notice how the sun is very different over there. You could lay out all day and just get a little bit darker where we're out for 10 minutes and we're burnt. Um, so it's uh, very, very different. Now, I'm just doing a little bit of concealing. And a concealer 
is wonderful. I've always kind of had dark circles under my eyes. I can thank my grandfather for it, apparently. Um, but if you've got the odd spot or anything that you just want to want to cover up you just you use a concealer this is a great one it's a liquid it comes up through a brush and you just kind of wind it when you need to <coughs> abby doesn't really need too much covering up of anything i'm just kind of going to play with the face anyway um i can't even see over that side that light's not doing the job i really wanted to do um but with foundation something that a lot of people don't realize is that you do need to set it so your skin doesn't drink it up like it's a moisturiser. And I have worked a lot with um, young women who work in offices and so forth, and they actually, um, they don't, well, they weren't using a, a powder. Um, and I, uh, they said to me, by lunchtime, I actually don't have any foundation left on my face. And I said, well, to your skin, the foundation is moisture. So when you work in an office, you've got air conditioning, heating, whatever, depending on whatever the season is, and, um, and your skin will just suck it up. But putting a, all you have to do is just dust a bit of powder. It can be pressed powder, it can be loose powder, any kind of powder, and it will actually set your foundation so it stays there all day. So also, if you've got more oily skin, you're, you're going to really notice um, putting powder on will actually, you know, make it more matte and, and, and that as well. Now, next is brows. Now, Abby, Abby has got great strong brows, um, which is great, and I really don't have to do too much, so I'm not going to do too much. But um, I don't know, a lot, of, a lot of people have now seen brow kits. So instead of using a pencil, you can actually um, purchase a brow kit. Ours actually has four stencils in it. So if you don't have brows or they're not particularly, you don't like the shape of them, you would rather give yourself a bit more of an arch and so forth, you can actually create whatever brow you want. And it's like, um, it's a stencil, it's really easy to use. As I said, I don't need to use it with Abby. Um, but, it, and then you just color it in with powder. Um, it's fantastic, but it has wax. So you actually use wax first and that actually just gives the powder something to stick onto. You don't see it, it just brushes through the hairs. And then it has two different colors. So you either have a dark color or you have a lighter color. Obviously I'm gonna use the dark color with Abby because she's got dark colored hair. So I am just going to strengthen her shape and work more on the top of her brow to give a bit of a lift. Your brows should start straight up from the corner of your eye and should finish on an angle like so. A lot of people's brows can actually finish short. And so it, a brow is the frame of your eye. And so if you can't actually see the frame, then it's hard to actually paint the picture. So. I find brows probably one of the most important things on your face, even if you weren't putting eyeshadow on. So, because it is framing, framing that area. Now, I, we have lots of different eyeshadows. I'm going to use the smoky one. And in here is 12 different colours. Now, we've all bought compacts and never used all the colours. Has anyone ever used all the colours in a compact? I don't think anyone has. Um, but the great thing is with this, I must admit, is that you chop and change. So there's a couple of ones that have got a bit of a sparkle to them. So they're obviously nice for night time. Um, there's quite dark ones if you like a smoky eye. And I actually did a smoky eye on Abby um, last weekend. Um, so you've got lots of different combinations and yeah, you pr there might be colours that you don't wear, um, but you cannot make a mistake with these powders. They are so easy to use. And what I'm going to do is actually put, I'm going to go that, that, that. you always put a lighter shade under the, under the brow bone and that actually makes your eyebrows pop. So I'm using like a, 
blush colour actually. And as you know, everyone has a different amount of area to play with on a lid. So I could quite easily just dust one colour all over Abby's lid with a highlighter colour and that would look fine. But I am going to actually just show you a bit of contouring. So I'm going to actually use a sparkly one on the lid and it's like a mid shade. And you probably can't even see the colour go on with this light coming down. I don't think you can anyway. So if you use a lighter shade or something interesting on your lid, it makes your eyelid pop. So if you're like myself that has what I call a hooded, a hooded lid, where you know your um, your eyelid top of your eyelid comes down a little bit over your eyelid, then it makes your eyes pop by putting a lighter shade on your lid because light brings things forward and dark colours makes things recede. It's the same when you're painting, it's, it's the same with, um, it's the rule of colour. So I'm just making sure I have blended that properly. And that's the difference also, blending so you don't see one colour start and finish. And then, because I'm not using the same colours that I used the other night, I've got to decide quickly what colour I am going to use. And I, because there's 12 colours, I've got a big choice, you know. Um, I, oh, let's go with, you're going to have, can you hang on to that for me? Um, I do love this colour. <laughs> it is lovely. Um, I think I might use it because I do like it. It's, it's, oh, okay. Um, so what I'm going to do. That was subtle. Yeah, very subtle. Okay. Can everyone see that I've actually put like a darker colour on the outer part of the eye? So what this is actually doing is contouring the eye and giving it a little bit more shape because dark colour, what does dark colour do? Recedes and light colour brings things forward. So hence, that's what I'm trying to do, create a little bit more interest with the eye. But you do have to blend it in. You can't kind of leave it like a triangle on the side of your eye. All right. So even though that looks quite dark like that, you use a blending brush and you just keep working it into the skin. It's the thing being the, the last one on the, you know, I'm the one that gets the word. Yes. Check, check, check. Okay. This light's terrible. Anyway, I will work with it. I will work with it. Um, and that's where brushes really make a big difference. If you don't have good tools, it's hard to kind of, you know, paint the right picture. Okay, um, excuse me girls, the ones that I've got my back to you. Does that look level, the girls in the front row? Yeah. Look even? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm going a bit blonde, you know. It's hard with that light to know exactly what I'm doing here. Um, I'm going to give a bit of shape to the eye, so looking up for me. I'm going to use a defining pencil and actually define the shape of the eye, closing up. And by putting it on the bottom, just to the middle of the iris and then along the top. <coughs> See how that's defined the shape of the eye? makes a big difference opening up for me. So along the bottom. And and on the top, closing up. I will hurry girls. I'm so see how we've actually got a bit of 
defining going on there. And I'm going to just quickly put some mascara on and blush and lippy. So looking up the roof for me, I do tend to do the bottom lashes up and down, use the wand up and down, just because then you can up, you won't tend to get the cheek so much. So more threading through the lash. And then, a little, little secret with adding length to your lash, looking straight ahead for me. So actually sandwiching your lashes by going on top and underneath. And then always wiggle your brush back and forth. That will actually help work through the lashes. And you can, I'll sh actually, Abby's lashes I don't have to curl. She's got amazing lashes. But if you want to curl your lash, you actually just hold your brush and you push your lashes back and count to three. One, two, three. And it will actually curl them. One, two, three. So instead of using those pinches where you can really do yourself damage, um, just kind of go with that and it's an easy way to go. <coughs> All right, blush. Because, as I said, it's like with colour, painting a picture, the great thing about a face is you've already got bone structure. And so you actually work with bone structure. Everyone's got a different shaped face. Everyone's... Um, so you, you work with it. So I'm actually just using quite a soft blush and we've got our brow bone so we're actually i'm just going to hit the bone and go underneath it but i'm also hitting on the apple of the cheek so when you actually look at someone you actually can see that color and it really gives your face a lift and if you're more mature more mature than abby um it will actually make you look younger as well <laughs> All right, I'm getting there. Lips, 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 lips. Um, I'm going to just outline the lip. I'm not going to change Abby's shape too much. That's what you can do with a pencil. You can actually make the lip fuller or thinner. Haven't got time to show you two, all the tricks tonight. Um, and Abby's, Abby doesn't tend to wear strong coloured lips, but I'm actually going to give her a winter lip look tonight, so it'll be something different for her. And I'm using our intense lipsticks, and they're great because they stay on a long time. Uh, I think it's Wineberry which is a colour that actually kind of goes with everything, you know. Don't you love that? Those lipsticks that just jump on your face and, and it doesn't, um, doesn't matter what you're wearing. And in winter, you'll always go deeper and richer in colours that you wear, especially in your lipstick. Compared to summer, you'll always go lighter and brighter. Doing a good job. Okay. That suits you, actually. You'll always go a little bit darker of a night time because you lose, you lose um, colour. All right. Let's let's do. What can I do with your hair? Where's the hairdresser when you need them, you know? And there we go. <laughs> you can definitely give everyone a little bit of a look around if you want to. Can, oh, well, they can have a look if they want to. They can come up and have a look. Thanks, Abby. No worries. <laughs> okay. Yep. Um, I'll make sure I'm not the last one next time. <laughs> I hate being hurried up. Um, okay, so hopefully you've picked up a few.